Hello and welcome back to my channel, Show Wizards. I'm going to look at how to convert a map from 17 to 19. I've been given permission by Lancy Boy to use his Thornbrook map, so big shout out to him and thank you very much for that. Uh, I want to start off in this video though, is it actually creating a sample mod map to work with from one of the in-game maps uh, because I figured, you know, uh, there's lots and lots of places you can download sample mod maps. Uh, in my experience, in 17 and in 19, a lot of them have issues, they have bugs and glitches. I prefer to make my own. Um, and also, you know, giants are always messing around with things, and sometimes you can download uh, a, a sample mod map, and it may not be based around the latest patched version. Uh, and as they've patched certain things, they've tweak, tweaked how you know, geometry works within the actual uh, terrain and various other different things. So you can end up downloading a sample mod map that yes, once worked, but now with the later patch no longer does. So I want to keep it kind of, you know, fresh with the updated version of um, Farm and Simulator 19, the latest patched version. So I figured, you know, by using one of the in-game maps as my base sample mod map to build upon would be probably the best way to go. And then you guys probably might get something from that, hopefully as well, uh, you know, a way of creating your own sample mod maps and then you know starting from there and building up and whatever else so I'm going to open up the giant Serta and I have a couple versions installed so for some reason whenever I open giant Serta from a shortcut it always reverts back to the previous version so I'm going to open up make sure I open up giant Serta version 8.10 I've got the beta version there's a few parts in there which will be needed when it comes to the farmland system and things like that which I've already done a video on anyway uh, but you know I will be going over it a bit more detail maybe in this video series so I'm going to open up the editor first and then <clears throat> we'll have a look at creating a sample mod map so this was part of um, the previous version 7.1.0 I think it was um, Giants Editor it was introduced for Farm Sim 17 where you can actually create a new mod from game so if I select that, it will bring up this drop box or drop down list and you can then select any of these things in here and create your own mod from one of the in-game items. So I'm going to take a look at one of the sample mod maps. Now I think if I remember rightly, sample mod map one is Felsbrunn and sample mod map two is Ravenport. So uh, you can generally tell that by the i3d file name. This one is map DE, which suggests to me that's Felsbrunn. If you look at sample mod map 2, it says US. So that's pretty much a dead giveaway which one is which. Like I said, I'm going to be working with the Felsbrunn one, so I want the map DE i3D set up. So sample mod map 1. I'm going to click OK. It'll give you a working directory. I just tend to go with default, and it'll put it in my documents folder and then create a new mod a folder for Farm and Simulator 19. And the name will just be, this is a sample mod map one. You can change that if you want. But to be fair, I just generally leave all of this alone. Just leave it at default. Click OK. And then it will build the map in a modded form for me. Um, and you can then change the name of the folder and the map and everything else later on as you go through it. So we'll just let this do its thing. Sometimes this can take a little while for it to actually load all the files in and build it all up. Um, and whatever else. Now I do have my farming simulator installation on a separate hard drive, which is a um, physical drive. So sometimes that can take a little while to kick into gear and bring everything over. But uh, my main drive is an SSD. So once I have it on the SSD, things then tend to work a little bit faster. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Will then <clears throat> save the mod and bring over any parts that potentially were were not brought over with the initial build of the map um, and then again once this is finished I'll quit out of this and close the editor down go to the documents folder FS19 mods and then just drag out the actual map folder like so under my desktop because I find it easier to work with I've been messing about with some various different things um, in blender and all sorts of I've got junk all over my desktop again uh, so anyway uh, if we open up the map now, it's all saved and generated all of the parts that it needs to generate for the Felsbrunn setup. I'm going to open up the map again in the editor. <clears throat> and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to literally delete everything and then rebuild it from the ground up sort of thing. So um, 
the Felsbrun setup I don't need, so I'm going to delete that. Placeholders, all this sort of stuff, the roads, everything else I'm going to delete as well. The only thing I'm going to leave behind is the career start point, just because it saves me having to uh, rebuild it and whatever else, or bring it back in and recreate it, because I think, if I recall, this does have user attributes assigned to it, so just saves me having to go through all the motions and rebuild this. You know, there's no point in deleting it, but the rest of the stuff, as far as that goes, I want to get rid of it. So I'm just going to do that and then click save. <clears throat> now, the way that uh, Farming Sim 19 works is a little bit different in the way that um, 17 worked when it comes to your folders. Uh, in 17, when you created a sample mod map from the in-game map, it brought all of the fill plane textures, the map textures, uh, the whole shebang came out with it. But now... It does not do that anymore. It actually links everything directly back to the in-game installation folder. So if I actually open up the editor, you can see all of this is pointing to um, the dollar data folder for the installation of Farming Simulator. So this kind of saves on a lot of file size when it comes to how big your end map file size will be because most of what you're going to be working with is going to be in, in your installation folder so basically for me not that one uh, for me this is actually on my <clears throat> d drive in games farmer simulator 19 so everything here is being directed right back into this folder so it, it kind of reduces what i need to have in here which is really really good in my opinion uh, it's a really nice way of doing things um like i say it keeps the file size uh, much lower than it ever was previously when creating sample mod maps and then rebuilding or whatever else. Um, there are going to be, obviously, when I bring things out from the Thornbrook map, I'm going to be bringing them into this map folder, so that will then start to add some um, size to the file, but uh, at least I don't have all of the in-game stuff in here. It's It's going to save me a little bit of space, at least. So... Now that I've actually got that, what I want to do is start off with um, setting up the terrain, all of the you know humps and bumps and dips and whatever else, the geometry of the terrain from the Thornbrook map. So what I'm going to do is extract out the zip here, which I've literally just downloaded from the Mod Hub. So I know I've got the latest version with the uh, all bug fixes and whatever else, if if uh, and where necessary. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the um, maps folder here in Map Zero Two we have the map 02.dem and if we look in the map de folder here you can see that this one is map de underscore dem dot png and it's all kind of grayscale now it's not the way it was for 17 but luckily um, when you actually change over or bring in the dem from a map from 17 the editor will make any necessary changes and kind of update it accordingly so what i'm going to do is actually drag this out onto my desktop and make a copy of it just so i've got that there if everything goes wrong and close that down for now now what you can do here is obviously really really quickly if you want to do this you can just rename this to map de underscore dem but what i want to try and do here is actually rename everything for this map so that it represents um thornbrook so I don't want to have everything saying map DE. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reopen up the map in the editor really quickly here. And I'm then going to resave the I3D, but call it Thornbrook. Uh, and just to make sure that I actually do spell this correctly, I'm just going to have a look. Thornbrook. Okay, so if I go file and then save as, make sure I'm in the right folder here because I've been doing a lot of messing around with some placeables and stuff. So let's go to my desktop and sample mod map one maps where we've got the map DE. And then what I'm going to do is just type in here. Uh, what do I want to call this? Do I want to call it map? I think if I call it map thorn brook, there we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and save. And then once that's finished saving, which would sometimes can take a little while, but there's nothing on this map now because I've deleted it. So this is when you want to do that, when you've removed everything, 
save it now so that uh, the i3d is not going to contain much and it will be much quicker and you can see now i have a new i3d um, and it's actually recreated the some of the files for me so what i'm going to do is delete the old ones because they no longer require those um, so what have we got here so have i got a shapes file for I don't see a shapes file, that's weird. Okay, let's open this up then and just double check that that's actually doing what I want it to do. Well, according to that, it seems to be okay. It's possible it's not creating any shapes files because there are no shapes on the map itself as of yet to, um, to for it to require that. So what I'm going to do is delete these uh, that one I don't need that one I don't need that one so I'm going to delete all of those because uh, these ones I'm going to recreate myself the tip coal and the placeable um, collision map will be recreated so I don't need those uh, I've already got those so I'm going to delete those and then we've got uh, terrain LOD terrain so I don't need that one or that one because they've been recreated and the only one that is left then is this one here, terrain weight. So what I'm going to do is, let's just take the name from here, just so I know I've got it spelt correctly. And I'm going to change that one like so. So now all of these parts are, for the actual map itself, are going to be set up with the Thornbrook name, which is exactly the way I want it to be. And then all I need to do is just change the XMLs um, and possibly the folder name, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do again then is if I click in there, I'm going to put that into there. So that's Map Thornbrook. And then this one here I'm going to change as well. And then this one, like so. And also this one. Now this map may or may not contain transport missions so that might not necessarily be uh, an issue but uh, it's best to do it now I think and then what I'm going to need to do is change a couple of things because I've obviously changed the names of the actual XMLs and various other different things I'm going to need to tell the game that I've done that so if I go into this one here you can see that the i3d is obviously now changed let me close those down because I'm not look, working with those anymore so this one here is now going to not it's not going to be map de anymore it's going to be <coughs> map thornbrook and then this one here for the transport missions that's going to be map thornbrook all the others are pointing to the dollar data so don't need any of those to be changed all of those are okay and then the only one down here is the farmlands so again this one is going to be <coughs> map thornbrook and again, those are pointing to the dollar data, so I don't need to change any of those. So we can go ahead and save that. And that's fine. So what I can do now then is, with this, I can go back into here. And what I'm going to do is, before I actually do anything further, I'm going to change this to mapthornbrook.dem. So I'm going to do that. And then this one here I'm going to delete, because I don't need that anymore. And then I'm going to basically cut that and put that directly into there now there's going to be a lot in here that you're going to need to change potentially because um, where I've changed certain uh, parts they're no longer going to be named map DE anymore so this one here is going to need to be changed to um, I think my clipboard running out so let's make a copy of that again and change this one there we go okay so that's now changed correctly uh, those are okay those are okay okay so fantastic so uh, just need to make sure that um, there are no others so what I'm going to do then is if I open up this here and we'll do a search control F and I'm just going to do a search for DEM 
and then we come down to here so it's no longer map de map de dot d or underscore dem so it's going to be map formbrook and then map formbrook so you just double check that so we've got map formbrook and then obviously the map formbrook underscore dem fantastic so all of that is now set up correctly so i'm going to go ahead and save that save that now obviously again all of these are going to need to be changed all these map de ones here because they are no longer in that folder so what i would suggest again here if you go Control f and then basically go to replace uh, so what i want to do is take let's get rid of that and we'll copy that put that into there and then the find what will be map de make sure i put it correctly i'm just going to go replace all so everything with map de is now map formbrook um, and whatever else is pointing to the dollar data that can be left exactly as it is that's not an issue so we go ahead and save and i'm then going to close all that down and what i'm going to do is then reopen up the map in the editor just to make sure it gives me no errors okay so looking good so far we've got no errors that i can see in there so as far as that goes everything is showing up there i'm going to open up the terrain editing window just to make sure that all of my foliage channels and whatever else or my foliage uh, layer values are still where they're meant to be because that's really important because sometimes when you change stuff like that in the editor uh, sorry in the i3d you can mess up all of your different layer values and you'll no longer end up with your farmland or tip coal showing up or whatever else um, and most importantly again with your actual foliage layers these can sometimes disappear because you're pointing all of this to the weight files and whatever else um, and if that's getting confused then this might start to mess up as well um, and also for your texture layers and whatever else for your terrain so you want to make sure all of those show up before you continue um, everything there looks like it's pretty good to go so i'm happy with that excellent so <clears throat> if we go into the mod desk let's just make sure that there's nothing there that uh, needs to be changed default vehicles so this one here maps map de that needs to be map thornbrook as well all of the others here look like they are okay for now that's fine default vehicles yeah that's fine so we've got all of those parts where we need them to be we've renamed any path file names that are pointing to folders that we've changed and various other different things so that's good excellent okay so just to make sure again then if i open up the map in the editor i want to see if it's actually now recognized the new terrain and it has we've now got a setup where the terrain is now representing what it would be for formbrook now i have found that sometimes when you're converting the gdm uh, sorry the D dem when you're bringing that over into 19 it can put ridges and bumps in places and not smooth them out quite as well as they were before um, so just be a little bit careful with that you may need to kind of go over the map with the smooth brush in some places uh, you'll need to test that out once you've completed the conversion just drive around the map and whatever else harvest some fields and things and just have a look and see um, what is happening you know if your vehicle gets stuck or you might find that you'll go to see the field and it'll miss an area that potentially might not necessarily be a problem with the original map but the conversion of the dem may have introduced a slight ridge somewhere in the map that it wasn't before um, and it's no longer seeding certain areas so you might need to uh, go into your smooth brush here and then just you know go into your terrain sculpt mode and just smooth out the area slightly to get you a better um, gameplay experience but uh, that's just something i've come across um, when converting a dem over from 17 to 19 but otherwise most of the things i've come across seem to work without any issues okay so um i'll save the map then uh where i am and this will then allow the editor 
to rejiggle and update the i3D and it will also then convert over the DEM for me into grayscale so I don't need to do anything any anything different there just allow the editor to do all the work for me now there is a couple of things here where the actual um, weight files now I think the textures they are multi-layered for the terrain so that is represented by your multiple um, weight files for uh, you know you've got asphalt or whatever else animal mud, mud one two three four asphalt one two three four I think this is represented by or it's it's kind of working with multi-layered textures um, for the uh, terrain textures ground textures so if you start working with the terrain textures from 17 which are just single layer um, textures it will bring them over but they won't look as good as what the farm sim 19 ones are so for what i what i've played around with i would probably say it's better to open up if you can open up the 17 version and then look at a certain area um, on that map and then paint them in manually i find that that tends to work a little bit better you may potentially work with the um, terrain textures from 17 convert them over to 19 so you know where they are on the map and then paint over them but what you may end up doing there is introducing some issues with uh, single layers and double layers you know multi layers uh, so for me I think it's probably better to, to actually just like I say open up the 17 version of the map and just concentrate on one area and then kind of work with the 19 version and repaint it in in whatever texture closely represents what was done in 17. Uh, there's going to be some textures, um, foliage textures, the additional textures like nettles and uh, things like that, which potentially um, won't be available in the 19 version of the map. You potentially, again, may be able to add them in. That's something I'm going to be looking at later on as I go through this um, modding tutorial series. But I think at this point we are now in a place where we've got a working sample mod map with the terrain geometry matching as close as possible to the 17 version of the Thornbrook map. So what I would do then is just so you know what you're working with, rename your folder. So this time I'm going to obviously rename it FS19 and I'm just going to call it Thornbrook. So we now have FS19 Thornbrook. Um, <clears throat> things like your PDA and your map preview and things like that you can use the original version um, from the 17 version if you can find it so like for example um, we've got the icon here uh, just make sure that they are the same size before you just literally drag them over so open them up in something like paint.net or whatever else so this is 1024 by 1024 and this one is 256 by 256 so you might need to have a bit of a play around with that and just you know rescale some stuff so it's not quite as big because this is an icon where you have your mod list when you get into um, choosing what mods you want to have in the game so there's no real need for it to be this big so you could potentially resize that down to 256 by 256 <clears throat> like that and then just resave it out make sure you get the um, format correct i have the wtv program here from nvidia which is really really handy i can just drag files directly into that and it will tell me what they are saved in obviously you want to match this to the 19 version so just drag it in and it's a dxt1 no mipmap so <clears throat> kind of work with that when you save resave stuff so uh, just file save as <clears throat> put this on my desktop and uh, we'll save dxt1 no mipmap and then save it then close that down uh, and then just literally drag that in and replace the other one like so now we have an icon again with your map preview and whatever else so this is just going to uh, give me felsbrun so we don't obviously want that so again with the w wtv program I can check to see what that is saved as DXT1 no map 2048 by 1024 <clears throat> so again depending on what you've got for your 
the um, map you're taking it from. Uh, you may need to, might not necessarily be in the same place, you'll have to look around for it, but this just here, so I've opened that one up. This is the same file size. Is it the same format? That's the thing. So we want DXT1, no mipmap, so let's just drag that into there and double, double check it. DXT5 with mipmap, so we don't want that. So I need to resave this one. So again, I'm going to open this up in paint.net, resave it, put it on my desktop, save, DXT1, no mipmap, and click OK. Close that down, and then just drag that in and overwrite the one for the 19 version. Might need to rename it, looks like, so we'll just drag it back out there. And if I take the name from there, and put that into there, Come on now, there we go, rename it, and then just drag it in and replace it, fantastic. So we now have the icon and the map preview done. Um, so if I was to basically go into game, I would get the icon show up in my mod list and the map preview as the map is then loading in. Fantastic, uh, default vehicles and default items, those are things obviously we're going to need to work with as we go through and build the map up and work with the new placeable system for Farm Sim 19. Uh, that comes much, much later because what I'm going to be doing in the next video is working with the 17 version of Thornbrook, edit, uh, exporting certain parts out that I want to bring into the 19 version, and then working with the uh, shaders and various other different things to make them compatible for Farm Sim 19. So I'm going to end it here because that's 26, 7 minutes, something like that. I want to keep these not necessarily short, but not long either, because um, I think there's going to be quite a lot to go over, so I don't want you guys having to rewatch hour-long videos to just find one part in it, so I think keeping them shorter would be potentially beneficial to you guys, so you can actually, you know, work along with, with the tutorial video. Um, so, yeah, in part two, we'll have a look at bringing stuff out, exporting stuff from the 17 version, making the changes, and then bringing that into the 19 version. I'm Shell Wizard. Thanks very much for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.